Hi, this is Chuck from Nerd3D. This tutorial we're going to take a look at weight mapping, specifically for the Lefemme figure. This pair of pants has been set up using the setup room method that was discussed in the 402 tutorial. We're going to pick up from there, but first we need to make sure we've got these pants set up right to continue with the weight mapping. First of all, you should have already saved them from the setup room creation, and you should check that your figure file is pointing to the correct geometry file. This should be your original geometry file. You should also make sure that the, the subdivision is set to zero on the clothing item while you're working on it. You can set this back later when you save the figure. When you're doing your weight mapping, you're going to want to compare against the actual production figure. So load the real Lefemme into your scene. We're also going to make a little change to the Lefemme figure here. I'm going to apply the whiteout material and then I'm going to go into the material room and I'm actually going to set it so that she is painted bright red. This is going to make it easier for us to see any time that there's poke throughs happening in the figure. I only need to set this for the torso and the limbs. That way we can see any place that it's not fitting like it's supposed to. Now obviously we're going to need to have this conformed while we're working on it as well. Now we should set the figure to its zero pose. That's not the default pose. Use zero figure from the figure menu. Don't use the restore command. That's not the same thing. We need the figure to be completely zeroed. Now what we're going to do is to make our life easier a little further down the road. We're actually going to create an animation here. Now frame zero is going to be at our zero pose. And then we'll go out to say frame five and set all the keys for that frame. The angles we want to set keys for are going to be the angles that there happen to also be JCMs for. That's going to make our life easier down the road. Lefem has JCMs for the forward bend at 80 degrees of rotation and the limit of rotation, which is 120. So we're going to set keys in our little conforming rigging animation at those two points. So at frame 5, we're going to set that bend to minus 80. And then we're going to go to frame 10, set another keyframe there, and we're going to just go ahead and bend that up to its limit. And we'll just set this for all the body part poses that are going to be our primary targets, let's say. And there's also a JCM for the back. And of course, we'll want to watch that back pose to make sure everything works like it's supposed to. And of course, there is also a side to side, which we'll set here. You may also need to set some compounds. Lefemme has a compound JCM that triggers when the thigh is bent and rotated to its limits. So we're going to add that one in too as one of our primary keys for setting the figure up. Now another important thing is that we have the figure set up so that we're only editing the weight maps. We do not want to edit the JCMs at the same time as the weight maps. And here's part of the reason for this is that if you make even the slightest change to the figure's weight maps, it's going to wreck the JCMs and you'll have to start over. So you want to get the weight maps locked in before you start messing with the JCMs. But how do we separate them out? Well, it happens that Lefemme has a feature built into her that makes this easy. If you go to the body of the Lefemme figure, you're going to find in the JCM controls, JCM master switch. Set this to off. And you'll notice when I slide that to off, the shape of the figure changes a little bit here. And what's happening is it's turning off the JCMs for everything. The figure, the clothing, everything is turned off. So I'm going to set that to off for each of my primary poses. I probably should have done that first. So with that turned off, now we can isolate just the weight maps without being interfered with by the JCMs. I'm going to select the thigh of the clothing item and then use Control shift j to open your weight mapping tools. Pick the bend, and you may notice there's a little bit of ripple going on in this joint. This is the way it copied naturally, and there's a reason why it copied like this. In fact, let's look at this a little closer. So when I toggle the thigh off, you'll notice this area right here. 
See how long this polygon is? Let me toggle it back on and off. You'll notice that that little step happens right here. And what's happening when it's copying the weight maps? It looks for the closest vertex to the vertex that it's weighting. That would be this vertex right here. And it applies the weight of that vertex to an area until it gets closer to the next vertex over. That's why you get these little ripples. So if when you're creating new clothing items, you try and stick to the same polygon density and edge flow as the base figure, you're going to get a much smoother transfer. But in this case, this is actually a refit figure. So I don't have any control of the geometry. We'll need to figure out how to fix these things without too much work. Let's take a look now and see how to fix this ripple. I'm going to pick the bend channel. I have the pants selected in the thigh. Pick my weight brush out, and I'm going to use one of the harder edge brushes like this one. You can see by the, the shapes of the circles, this is a hard edge weight brush. And what I want to do is paint the smooth, but I want to kind of try and keep this part on the leg and this part on the hip. I want to handle them separately because I don't want them to kind of smash together. So I'm going to paint this lower part smooth, and then I'm going to paint the upper part on the hip smooth. Now, you can get even more detailed in this. You can select a Restrict to zone. If you really needed to keep things separated more precisely, you can actually set up the so that the weight map tool will only affect one group or only affect one material. We don't need to get that detailed for this one. So after I smoothed this, I noticed that I got a little poke through right here. So we need to fix this before we move on. The question is, what do I fix? Which side do I fix? Let's take a look at this to figure out what we need to do to fix this without messing anything else up. Okay, first of all, we need to make sure that it's not the bulge maps that's causing us problems. So I'm going to turn the bulge maps off on the clothing item as well as the figure. Now, with both bulge maps turned off, you can see that I still have the poke through. And it didn't really change very much, switching the bulge maps off. So we know the problem isn't coming from the bulge maps. It is coming from the weight map itself. So let's see if we can figure out what happened. As I smoothed this, the area on the thigh become, became lighter. The weights in this area are now less. The area on the hip are still at their correct value, which is actually much less than the thigh. The reason the thigh values went down is because they are so close to the values in the hip part up here, it actually kind of siphoned some of the weight out of the thigh. So we need to put some of that back in. And I'm going to use a soft and relatively large add brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of weight back in here. And you can see how, while it pushes the thigh up and backwards, making it rotate more, at the same time, it's making the hip part rotate more. So you need to be careful when you're adding these weights in that you don't put too much. Because what can end up happening as you rotate the thigh back down in one of your mid poses, and I should show you, I'm doing this on the animation palette, I'm going to move it to a mid pose. If I had put too much weight in here, I would start to get poke throughs up in this area. Now as it happens, these pants are fairly loose fitting and I can get away with a lot of change there. Tighter fitting items in this area, if you add too much weight, you'll start getting poke through because this will be bending up here when it's not supposed to. Now if something you may be tempted to do is to start getting artistic with your weight maps. For example, in the back of the figure here, well, we can smooth it out, but really this part wouldn't be pulled down like this in a real figure. So you may be tempted to come in here and start getting artistic with your weight maps and making this come out straight and pretty the way it would in a real figure. That's not a good thing. As you'll notice that as I start to get this straight, I also start to get some terrible poke through here. Okay, the reason for this is that we have moved the vertexes so that they're no longer matching the figure. When you're weight mapping, 
your objective is to get the weights on the clothing as close to identical as you can to the figure's weight maps. In other words, what you want to do when you're weight mapping is tell your artistic brain, your right brain, to go away. Play it some smooth jazz so it doesn't bother you and let your mathematical precision left brain do the weight mapping. The artistic part is best left for the JCMs, and we'll cover JCMs in another tutorial. Let's go ahead and finish weight mapping this figure. First, let me show you how to fix this. Remember I said we need to match those underlying weights. So if you've messed a spot up and don't want to have to start over, you need a way to get those underlying weights back into the clothing. So we're going to use the weight brush for that. Click weight, click the little eyedropper, and then pick a spot excuse me, pick a spot on the base figure, pick your weight tool, and pick a spot right in the middle of that bad spot. Turn your weight brush off, switch back to your target figure, with the weight brush tool, now you can paint the weight that you sampled from the base figure into that area. And you may need to take samples from several areas to get this to work, but you get the idea of how this works. You are able to pick up the weight from the underlying figure so you don't have to try and guess what it was. Now I'm going to use the simple add brush here to kind of put this back the way it was. Now I want to show you another pitfall that can happen while you're doing weight mapping. And this has to do also with the getting artistic, but it can also happen when you're trying to get the weight maps to balance. Because if you'll remember, this one weight map for the bend channel is used for this position, bending it to the limits, and even for bending it back. It all uses the same weight map. So if you come to, say, one of the forward poses, and let's say, for example, we know that in a natural pose, the pants would sag a little bit down here because of gravity. The problem is, when we rotate this back, this is what happens. We can't use the weight maps to create things that should be done with morphs. The weight maps are mechanical. The JCMs are going to be your artistic part. So what you have to do is just like with this, with, just like with the fixing of the band up here, you can fix this the same way. Now, it also happens that the lower leg on this figure, the weights are all just full strength 100%. So I can just paint that back and it's going to work just fine. The next thing to look at in your weight maps is going to be the bulges. Now each joint rotation has two bulge maps. There's going to be the right map and there's going to be the left map. Now in this case the right map just happens to be on the right. That's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you'll have to fish around to figure out which one's which. And just like the weight maps, the bulge maps need to match the underlying figure as closely as possible. They may also need to be smoothed. One of the things you can do to see if the part of the figure that you need to edit is the weight map or the bulge map is you can toggle the bulge maps on and off. And you can do this for both the figure and the clothing. For the most part, you're just going to need to smooth the existing bulges a little bit from the automatic transfer and that's going to be good enough. We'll talk more about bulge maps in an upcoming tutorial. This should help with weight mapping for LaFemme and weight mapping in general. Thanks for watching and have fun using Poser.